We talk about what to do and what not to do. And one of the things not to do is to say something like, well, you know, her kids or his kids, you know, they accept me. You know, why can't you accept so and so? It it seems obvious not to say that. However, I, I think that probably happens more often than not. Did you push record? We're continuing our conversation with marriage and family therapists Carol Hughes and Bruce Fredenberg, the authors of Home Will Never Be the Same Again, A Guide for Children of Grey Divorce. Thanks so much for staying over. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Yes, yes. Well, we will link to our previous two segments where we discussed, well, really a topic that never occurred to me until, uh, you know, I, my, your book was presented to me, and that is how great divorce, being, you know, getting divorced after a long-term marriage, how that affects adult children. Uh, it just never, never occurred to me because we do tend to think that, oh my gosh, you know, it, it's time for us to be happy. It's time to shine. I can't take this anymore. Once the kids are out of the house, out of school, whatever, you know, that's it. One of the things, of course, that, or one reason I should say why we move on is maybe because we already have somebody new in our lives or we want we want to find happiness meaning we want to partner up again we we want to find somebody else so dating after gray divorce also a topic we've covered in depth <laughs> uh, on this channel what do we need to consider when it comes to our adult children well i i tell adult i tell parents to think about how would they best like to receive shocking news and just pause as I just did and let them say well I guess I would want it to be in person and I guess I would want the person to be thoughtful and considerate of my feelings that I might be shocked and so if parents think of it that way how what would be best for you so probably one-on-one -on -one in a quiet time uh, when it's just the two of you, not like, oh, by the way, at the end of dinner or at th announce it at Thanksgiving dinner or something, that you're dating. Uh, be considerate of how it's going to affect your adult child. And don't just blurt it out or send a text. By the way, I'm dating and don't tell your mom or dad. Don't do that. Yeah. And I, I realize that every situation is different. Uh, but asking, for, you know, from, from your experience as you counsel, you know, hundreds if not thousands of, of these of these children, is it always a shock? Is it, it, I mean, it is always a shock, isn't it, to some extent? I think that even if people, well, in my own experience, when I was growing up, my parents argued a lot. And, and this is how poorly balanced they were. My dad was really into sports. My mom didn't like or care about sports. She was into choral groups and she was into taking painting lessons. Uh, my mom was allergic to tobacco and my dad smoked a pipe and it could fill up a house in a couple of minutes. I mean, so, and they, and they argued a lot. And so as a child growing up, I would talk to my brothers, well, you know, maybe they should get divorced or why don't they? Or even when we were out of the house. And yet when I was 30 or so, and in graduate school, my mother told me privately that she was considering divorcing my dad, and only she was more than considering. Uh, her health deteriorated, so then she never did it. But I remember, and she wanted me to keep it a secret at first. Like I said, sometimes people don't tell the other person. And I remember leaving the house and f feeling really upset. It was bothered. I realized how many things were changing. And, and I was already married. I was in graduate school. I had a new car that year. I mean, there were a lot of stuff going on that I was separate from them. And I went away feeling guilty. That surprised me. All these things came up. And so I think even when kids think that they would like their parents to divorce, the reality of it. It's like a lot of things in life that we imagine how it'll be. If it's bad, it's always worse than we imagine. And so, and I, you know, it's like a death for, for people. Yeah. And a lot of times the adult children, even if they have wished that the parents would get divorced over the years, don't think how it's going to affect their lives, just as Bruce was saying. And some may already have children of their own, and they haven't even thought through what are the holidays going to be like, various celebrations, graduations, uh, how is it going to feel when I see my parent dating? 
you know, some of them, you know, dye their hair, whiten their teeth, start wearing different kind of, you know, cooler clothes. And all of a sudden it's like, who is this person that's my parent, you know? So that can be the, the second wave of it can be shocking too once they are seeing their parent uh, dating or at least hearing about it. Yeah. Well, and of course, that's that's what I want to really touch on in this segment is do you do you tell your adult child that you're starting to date or do you not say anything until it becomes more serious? You know, and, and how, how do you manage that process? There's lots of questions I, around that. I think it depends on how recently the divorce happened. Like, for instance, if you're going to introduce them to the person that they were with in order to divorce the other parent, that's all almost always going to be a problem unless the family was, you know, really, really in trouble so much that the kids hated one parent. But typically that's not the case. And I've seen it similar things play out when when a parent dies, you know, somebody's widowed and then the kids are not used to seeing mom or dad being uh cozy, comfortable, loving with another person. Mm-hmm. And and because, you know, that's not been their life and it's really shocking. So I think you'd give the same guidelines you might think of for younger kids. Don't introduce somebody if they're not going to be around. And, uh, you know, and you sort of have to judge it with your own kids, you know, the relationship with them and their ability to adjust it because there's going to be a, a tendency for them to not want you to do that at first. Mm-hmm. And so it's and then families have their own communication styles. The more they talk, and they may need to facilitate a conversation if it's causing an uproar. You know, if somebody keeps getting in the way of the parent dating or the parent can't keep a boundary and the kids don't know how to tell them, they might want to consult with a family therapist just to facilitate that conversation. Mm-hmm. And don't expect uh, your adult children to be as happy for you as you are for yourself, that someone actually wants to date you. We've had parents say that too. Why can't you be happy? Someone wants to date me. I, you know, I thought my life was over as, as a partner. Uh, be sensitive to that that could still be not, could be uncomfortable for them, definitely. Yeah. Well, that does raise the question though, and maybe selfishly on my part, you know, how, how much do you have to cater in that sense? I mean, don't you have, don't we have a right to move on? And still be sensitive to somebody's need? Absolutely. We, we aren't saying it's a black or white issue. Absolutely, these parents deserve to move on and should move on because the research is clear that when people are in a relationship, you probably already know this, typically their health is better, they live longer, they're happier, and so forth. So absolutely, the parents need to move on and have a right to move on. It's how they do it. And, and what consideration they show to their adult children and to the grandchildren. And uh, also, sometimes the a parent might have a closer relationship with one of the adult children and knows that that adult child is worried about him or her being alone and so forth. That would be a really appropriate time to share with that adult child. I don't want you to worry. I know you have been. I'm dating someone. If you want to meet him or her, I think he's a nice person. She's a nice person. You know, I'm happy to ha- you know introduce you because I know you've been worried about me being alone. So as Bruce was saying earlier, evaluating this different situation that the parent and the adult children are in is part of this. There isn't really a one size. Well, there are a few one size fits all as we've already talked about, but consider the kind of relationship the parent has with the adult child as well. Yeah. Like sometimes people want to rush the new person into the family celebrations. Mm-hmm. You know, you've, you, there's a, a birthday or graduation or grandkids and, and the other person's so happy and they want to show off their new whoever and they want to bring that person in and they know it's going to disturb the other parent because they're still too raw, especially if it's the levy is the one who doesn't have anybody and the leave or brings in their new their new squeeze, um, you know, that's going to be really painful and make the family tense. And, and you know, that's not going to go on forever. But, you know, I would say during the first year, depending how old they are and how, I mean, if somebody's 95, maybe they shouldn't have to wait a year. But and an attorney told us they had somebody come into the office in their 90s divorcing. So, yeah, I would probably say don't wait. You don't need a year and a half. But, <laughs> but you know, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're 50, 60, you know, you can wait a couple of months at least or six months or a year to bring them into the family celebrations especially if they're new you don't even know them that well yet you know to know how they're going to mesh you know 
Yeah, that, that's great. That's a great point. I read uh, it, uh, a part of your book that just popped up or, or came up when you when you said that is you know we talk about what would to do and what not to do, and one of the things not to do is to say something like, well, you know, her kids or his kids, you know, they accept me, you know, why can't you accept so and so? It it seems obvious not to say that. However, I, I think that probably happens more often than not. It really yes, does. It does. It's very common. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, that that is a thing absolutely to avoid. And also to remember that Maybe your relationship as the parent wasn't as close with your adult child growing up as, as maybe the adult child wanted. And so to have one-on-one -on -one time, schedule one-on-one -on -one time with that adult child and maybe his, his or her side of the family, maybe there's a wife and children, it models to the, your adult child that you do still care about him or her and that you are part of their family, they are part of your family. Because believe it or not, I don't know if you've ever known any adults who were jealous, but adult children can be jealous of a new significant other when they see the parent giving attention to that significant other and maybe that significant other's children. These can be, can become very complicated family dynamics and relationships. Absolutely. No, that's a terrific point. I totally see it. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I totally do. Uh, well, we're almost at the end of these segments. These go by so fast, and it's, you know, it's, this is a topic that can be discussed, gosh, ad nauseum. <laughs> and there's so many yes. other aspects to it. Uh, I'd love to have you back sometime. You know, uh, you know, let's talk about what else is really important because we do really have a very uh, niche audience on on here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little opposite of where where what the book is directed at. Uh, nonetheless, I think both sides really need to understand how important this is. Uh, is yeah. there anything else that that uh, you'd like to say mm -hmm. on the on the dating yes. topic before we close yeah. out? It, it ties in with uh, one of the family lawyers who's also an estate planning attorney that we know uh, wrote a segment in the book. We have one chapter that's directed right at the the parents and things to consider about finances, which many people don't think about, and many family lawyers don't think about. And so I would encourage the parents to let your adult children know that you're not going to be reckless with money, which hopefully that can be true, uh, and that you know, you're going to try to preserve the family legacy, financial legacy, if there is one. And I would encourage them to read that chapter. There are a lot of tips in the that chapter that is directed at the parents. No, that's great advice, especially uh, if somebody new is involved. I can see where that would be, you know, a, a mm -hmm. big concern. And, and there are gold diggers, I was just <laughs> both men, say, and, men and women. It does there happen. There are gold diggers and con people. Yeah. And that is a concern that some adult children have, and rightly so. Yeah. Bruce, any Yeah, and I think that since these pa older parents aren't used to dating and don't really think of those things, and... Um, there's a great line from Chris Rock, the comedian. He said, you know, the first 90 days you're not meeting me, you're meeting my representative. <laughs> <laughs> and so when people tell me, oh, I finally met my soulmate, I, and I know they've only known him for a couple of months, I say, oh, great, then have they seen your cranky and angry side yet? And they'll say, well, no. And I'll say, well, what do you think they haven't shown you yet? You know? <laughs> great, 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 great point. And... Uh, Again, you know, thank, thank you for raising this. It, it is. It's, it's a huge consideration. Uh, obviously, I, I want to close on, on, on the positive side that, you know, we all, we all deserve happiness. And if your relationship isn't working, then, you know, at, at some point, I, and I don't know what that point is, that's at the point of the segment, but you do deserve to move on. You know, mm -hmm. how do you do that uh, and be, you know, and do it in the right way? With, with your children or even be, be aware that, that that is an issue. So thank you so much for this book. Uh, I will link to it, of course. I'll link to all your information so people can get a hold of you directly. And I look forward to having you back on Second Act TV. We would love that. Thanks, Azilka. Yeah, thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube and when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.